what you're going to see right now is from the Baja 1000 and off-road racing even that takes place in Mexico. Yeah, that's an incredible racing clip. Just look at the truck tearing through the desert. Now, do you notice how much motion is happening there? The wheel spinning, the suspension bouncing, the truck jumping over dunes. So here is my big question. How many different types of motion do you see here in this video? A bigger question, why we study types of motion at all? Understanding these type of motion is exactly what helps engineers design machines that can survive in such extreme conditions. Because when you're dealing with high speeds, rugged terrain and a race where the margin of error is racer thin, you've got to understand motion deeply. So let's take a step back from the racing. We'll explore motion through a few everyday examples and then we'll come back to the Baja 1000 race to figure out how many types of motion we can identify. So we see fast moving traffic every day, cars, bikes, buses, almost all going in straight line. That's one kind of motion. Then there is this bike accelerating through mud. Yeah, there is a lot of motion going on there. Especially if you look closely at the tires, you can see it actually spinning. That's another type. Then there is sewing machine stitching away. You notice the needle go up and down. That's also a type of motion we come across quite often. And similar to this is the pendulum. Okay, maybe you don't see pendulum on a daily basis, but you know what is similar, a swing on a playground. Same kind of movement, right? So clearly we see different types of movement in our daily life. But what exactly are these type of movement? Let's break them down. The first one you saw, the traffic moving straight, that's called translatory motion. The second one, tire spinning on the bike, that is rotational motion. And the swing machine and the pendulum or the swing moving back and forth, that's called oscillatory motion. Now here is a deeper question. What makes a motion translatory? What makes a motion rotational? And what exactly defines to and from motion? Let's dive again further deeper and understand this. Let us look at an example of a car that's going to move in a straight line. You have noticed I have marked three points on the car with the red and pinkish dots. Got it? Now let the car start moving. As you can see, all the parts of the car, those three marked points are moving in a straight line just like the car itself. That means every point on the object is moving in the same direction along the same path. When all the parts of an object move in a straight line, we call that the translatory motion. Now let's look at the tire of the same car, which is rotating. Again, I have marked two points on the tire. Can you see? Yes. Now watch closely. Those points are not moving in straight line. They are moving in circular path round and round and there is a fixed center point about which it is rotating. That's not actually a point. That's an imaginary line passing through that center about which these points are rotating. That's called the axis of rotation. Let me show you in 3D. Yeah, here we go. When the tire rotates, this is what's happening. All the points on the tire are rotating about that imaginary axis called the axis of rotation. And this kind of motion is called rotational motion. Now let's move on to the third type of motion. And imagine a ball bouncing back and forth. It is moving to and fro about a fixed point. This is called oscillatory motion. A repetitive back and forth movement about a fixed position. So to sum it up, when all parts of the object move in a straight line, like the moving car, that's a translatory motion. When all the points of the object rotate around a fixed axis, like in the case of the tire, that's rotational motion. And when the object moves to and fro about a fixed point, like a swing or a bouncing ball, that is oscillatory motion. These are the three common types of motion we see in our everyday life. All right, let's get back to where we started. Remember the Baja 1000 race, the powerful truck tearing through the desert? Yeah, let's break that down for a moment. I'm going to slow down the motion for you. Watch closely. You'll notice two types of motion happening at the same time. The tire is rotating and the tire is also moving forward. All right, see that again? The tire is rotating about the axis. The tire is rotating about the axis and at the same time it's translating, moving in a straight line. So what we are seeing here is actually a combination of rotational and translatory motion, which brings us to a bigger idea. Motion can also exist as a combination of types. You can have rotation plus translation, like the tire of the truck, rotation plus oscillation, or even all three happening together in a complex system. And that's how we truly begin to understand the dynamic of a real world motion. 
especially in extreme environments like this Baha 1000 race.